you were talking about cutting losses and going our separate ways. <laughs> I was like, I'm let's sell the like, house. Let's split the uh, money from the sale and let's just go. Like, I'm done. That? I'm like, what? Hello, my name is Mrs. Melanin. And I'm Belief Mel. And this is Anaya. Oh. And I am Anaya Zat. And we're here with episode 224 of How, How Married, Married Are, Are You? you? Okay, my name Belief. This is Zeb. We married 13 years. Living in California, we got four, four kids. kids. Relationship scary. It's very necessary. We share our love of struggles. We ask how, how married are, are you every Tuesday and Thursday, shoddy. If you're listening, you're in a wedding party. It's okay if you want to put your hands up. You got the questions. We got the answers. It's chocolate, chocolate baby story time. time. Chocolate baby story time. It's, it's chocolate, chocolate baby story time. One. One, two, three, and oops. It's chocolate baby story time. And Aya, do you have a chocolate baby story you'd like to share on my behalf? Um, Did anything interesting happen recently in the land of chocolate babies? Um, I didn't see any. No, no, no. Okay. All right, yeah, so we took... Uh, Raya to hockey for the first time. The morning of this dude is talking to Theo and they're talking about how they're going to compete with how many hat tricks they're getting. Um, and Raya's talking about how he's going to score more points and he's practicing his celebrations. That boy got out there and was like, man, that game is way faster <laughs> than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, he said it was harder than he thought it was going to be. Yeah. And way faster. So that was interesting just watching him be humbled, which I love. Like, I'm glad he's confident. But sometimes I think it's easier to teach kids to be humble than it is to teach them to be confident. So I'm actually happy. I'm actually glad that he has a lot of confidence. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I'm also grateful that he can learn from his lessons. Yeah. Like, he's honest about things he's learned about what he thought he knew yeah most of the time anyway yeah um i have a story to tell so glenn and i we have four kids we had to get the kids out the house the other day and because we had people coming over to like do some stuff in the house and we i was it was a sunday was it a sunday or a saturday it might have been a saturday i don't know what day of the week it was However, I was like, okay, we don't have certain things made. I need to do a little bit of meal prep. And I think they were coming out at like 11 or one o'clock. Mm -hmm. And so I decided I'm going to make this chicken. And so that it's ready for me to like do what I need to do with it afterwards. Oh yeah. Glenn so wholeheartedly tried to convince me this is not the time to do it. And I said, I'm so sorry, I have to do this because you know, I already know what it's going to be like afterwards and I'm not going to have capacity to do this later. So I'm going to do this. And the reason he said not to do it is because he was like, we're about to have all these people over the house and it's going to smell. smell. And I was like, I'm so sorry. I, I, I cannot and say, OK. And mind you, Theo is in the middle of this whole interaction. And Theo is our child that doesn't really like mind his own business. He feels like he has to chime in sometimes. And he often takes his dad's side because he's a daddy's boy. You know, so there's that. Yeah. Well, fast forward to, I don't know, maybe the next day or two days later, <laughs> Glenn, um, Glenn was about to go for a walk. Yeah. Glenn was about to go for a walk. And I, I think I joined you in that walk. But he was like, hey, Theo, go feed the dog. And I was like, no, I don't think you should feed him before the walk because then we'd have to wait like another hour or something because you're not supposed to walk the dog so soon after eating, the dog eats. I was like, let's feed her when we get back. And so Glenn listens. I said, <laughs> okay. And my son goes on to say, see mom, dad knows how to listen. Mm. And I was like, oh, so grossed out. <laughs> <laughs> I was so grossed out by that child at that moment. Cause I was like, 
I hear you. I understand your observation. I understand your 11 year old mind and how you could relate one thing to another, but mm -mm. I didn't think it related, but it was interesting. These children be listening and they be chiming in when they don't have no business chiming in, y'all. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it was, it was a sweetness to that moment that was kind of like, but I understand he only knows what he knows mm -hmm. and doesn't really understand the context. And those are two, two very different situations. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, if you are a frequent listener of this podcast, we welcome you right now to go pause, stop what you're doing, like the video, make sure you are subscribed to the channel. You already know it's going to be good. So just send it to a friend, send it to them, send it to them. And if you have not told your friends about the How Married Are You podcast and how lit the wedding party is, you need to go ahead and do that right now too. Just send a text to two or three or share it on your social media pages. We love that. And while you're at it, leave a review. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever your favorite podcast app is, please leave us a five-star review, letting everybody else um, know how great we are and making it easier for them to find this community of people. Uh, lastly, we are starting a community um, for the How Married Are You wedding party. We have not decided on a name yet, I don't think. No. Um, but we will be starting this community. It is going to be a nominal fee a month. But in this community, we are going to have a once a month for women only situation, a once a month for men only situation. We're going to have after hours with Glenn and myself together. And we are going to have so many other things for you guys to um, to benefit from in this community. But most of all, we're going to be in community with each other. For this community, there will also be opportunities for Glenn and I to have one-on-one -on -one sessions with the people. Oh, yeah. I'm like mentor uh, couples. Though. Yeah. So if you are interested in something like this, please be on the lookout. That announcement is coming soon. I am hoping that we will launch April 1st. <laughs> I hate putting dates out there, but I'm going to do it so I can hold myself accountable to what I say I'm going to do. Um, we are so excited about that. I am actually really excited about that. I think it's going to be amazing. I think it's another way for us to um, be in relationship and like be in community in real time, you know? I don't know. So I hope that you guys will join us there. We will see you there soon. Um, now, I think it's time for us. Did I announce everything? Well, yeah. Uh, also, we're doing one video a week. Oh, yes. That is public. Right. So instead of doing it Tuesday and Thursdays, we're going to have to change the, the... It's Tuesday and Thursdays, but if you're in like... In the community. Yeah, you'll get both videos, but we're going to start to separate that a little bit more. Just because like, though I know you guys support and love the video and you guys like and all that stuff... The channel isn't growing as fast mm -hmm. or not as deep as we wanted to. You know what I'm saying? And so we have to think about other ways to continue to do this mm -hmm. because we really do love doing this. But at the same time, you know, like we have to make it make sense financially. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So uh, hopefully you guys are down with that and so can support with that. If not, then cool. You know what I mean? Um, we know that this is a lifelong thing for us. So, you know, for those of you that really do support and want to see us grow and want to see this thing continue and we are adding value, and we just want you to be rewarded for that in some way. So that's what we're doing. Um, yeah. And are we ready? We're ready. Oh, my pattern. Let me. How much battery you got? She's good. She's got 25%. Okay. So this person wrote in and was like, there is a reason men don't write y'all. Mm. And they trying to let us know. So I was like, let's, let's, let's hear it. All right. Here's why brothers rarely email you guys. Our ladies will hear the email being read on the show and immediately know their name, their man is responsible and then feel publicly shamed, even though you guys don't use names. No brother wants that smoke. These ladies be dragging these dudes all up and down these podcast streets. And Facts. These, <laughs> and these one-sided damsel in distress emails with a defenseless dude at home probably saying, she lying, Glenn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but ain't nobody going to hear him. So that is exactly why I decided to tap in. Ladies be on some trifling energy too. Okay, now the energy here. It's a little aggressive. Nah, I respect it. I need this. Is what we need. We can't be t asking the dudes to write in and when they write okay, in. Okay, okay, okay. Judging okay, okay, every part okay, of okay, their okay, thing. Okay, okay. I'm not judging. I'm just saying, okay, now. Yeah, this is um, what I like. Right I'm a here. woman. Here we go. 
For most of our marriage, my wife was controlling, manipulative, and disrespectful. However, she had no idea this is how she was coming across. I communicate how her attitude and behavior was impacting me, but because of how she was raised, she thought I was one with problem, and the truth in her mind was I didn't really love her and wanted someone else because I had so many issues with her. Over the last three years, she's had a serious... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read that part so that it's not specific. Okay. Over the last few years, she's had a series of... Let's let's stop. Recently, she's had a series of revelations. She's begun to see how she often dismissed me in the past and disrespected me without knowing. This has been good, but if I'm honest, because of the damage done during the earlier years, I've developed a wall between us. I've worked to break it down from... But I've worked to... I've worked to break it down, but from time to time, those past behaviors come back. I can't feel comfortable enough to be completely vulnerable. If she does... If she does something that irritated me and I have the audacity to tell her, her narrative is that I'm not just irritated with the things she did. I'm overall irritated with who she is as a person. If I don't understand the logic she used for a decision and ask what made you do that, her narrative is that I just don't actually that I just don't understand her as a person and she's unhurt. She feels unheard Mm. when these motives are assigned to me because me. I'm sorry. When these motives are assigned to me, it makes me want to pull away because explaining my actual intent has proven to be a fruitless effort and I'm too old for this back and forth. At this point, I'm like, think whatever you want to think because once she develops a narrative that is, there is no moving her off of it. So I go quiet. There is much else to do. I know this pattern of unhealthy. I know this pattern is unhealthy, but I'm just trying to survive out here. I enjoy the wins when we have them, but sadly the wins feel like interludes on a album full of L's. Man, poetic. That's poetic. That's a line. I know a lot of dudes feel like this is this in marriage, but we'd rather keep the peace and take the L than be honest with someone who's only going to deflect when we express a genuine emotion. I don't have a question. I guess I'm just representing for some of the men in the audience. Blessings, y'all. I think we should take a moment for the men in the audience to comment and let us know if this is relatable. If you're watching this with your partner, come back. <laughs> from your yeah, own account open your um your f- like incognito incognito window <laughs> start a new account <laughs> and continue to hide <laughs> no man no yeah. i i like this email because i understand i know it's very relatable it's very relatable mm-hmm. can you say more no because i i i can relate to her i feel like there are times where is where is and i wants to show you guys her rainbow What's happening? Don't show mama business now. Yeah. Hold on. You got to keep it big. Yeah. That's a nice rainbow. Somewhere over the rainbow. She had hives today? Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Go ahead, babe. I probably should have given you Benadryl instead of Zyrtec, huh? Um, Okay. He said, what did he say? You were saying it's relatable. Because he said... Um, her narrative is that I just don't understand her as a person and she feels unheard when the motives are assigned to me. Uh, da, 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 da. Where was it? He was well, I can relate because you've developed walls. Yes. Like that in and of itself is something that you do where it's like, well, as and it's interesting, the contrast between this email and then last episode's email because it feels like he legitimately has a reason to like build walls, shut down, and just be quiet. At the same time, I can relate to him too. Because sometimes you be calling me out for stuff and I'm like, well, I'm just not gonna say nothing. Like, it's tempting to just be like, I'm not gonna try, I'm not gonna do nothing, I'm just gonna exist. <laughs> mm. um, or just to shut down. Why are you mm Because I think that that's not what he's saying. He's not saying that you shouldn't try. I'm just saying, like, he's saying, like, yo, if I say, hey, this behavior is not okay, Mm -hmm. she attributes the behavior to who she is, Mm -hmm. not something that she can change. Mm -hmm. I see what you're saying, what he's saying. Does that make sense at all? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm saying, like, if I'm like, hey... If but it, that's the same thing is if I say hey, this right here got it. Th- I'm not okay with this, and you're like, well, fine. 
<laughs> you don't like who I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, obviously, you don't love me. <laughs> yes. And you, why are you, you even pro- here? Why are you even here? Why are you why, why, don't, why don't you just find someone yeah. else who you yep. want to be with? <laughs> and I'm saying, hey, I didn't say I didn't want to be with you. I'm saying this behavior is not appropriate. Oh, my gosh. I guess there is a recent example of this because I'm like. Several. <laughs> shut up. Okay. Give one that is appropriate to share on the podcast. One that's appropriate? Yeah, give an example because you just did that a little too. I'm sorry. I just was trying to chime in. Go and share it. I can't. We don't have any ones that are appropriate. Dang it. But go ahead. What you were going to say. What were you saying? (laughs) (laughs) Well, because look, we we, we were both saying that you, you saying you can relate to him. But I'm like, look, like I'm not asking for you to be a completely different person. I'm just saying there is a direct correlation between this behavior and this. And I said this before on a podcast. I was like, look, in order for you to hear me, you need support Mm -hmm. to hear me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that seems like the, the, the off chance that we are like doing well, there's so many different things that need to happen in order for you to see my perspective. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like you have to be in proximity with a person, a mentor of some sort. Mm -hmm. Your friends kind of got to be like, "Uh, I don't know about that. Or, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Um, Your therapist has Mm -hmm. to be scheduled that week. You know what I'm saying? And me and God have to be in good communication. Right. And then I have to kind of shut down. Like, I have to kind of be like, I have to pull away. Because if I keep, like, allowing the behavior to happen, it seems like it's nothing wrong. Mm-hmm. So it's all, it's it's hard. It's very difficult to kind of work through those seasons. So I understand what he's saying. But I also, I don't know what to do. Like, I don't know how to make it better. You know what I'm saying? Because I think that was one time I was like, yo, how, how can we? How can I make this better? Like, how can I get you to hear me? Like, what's the language I should use? And you were like, well, you could just talk to my mentor directly. Direct, directly. And I was like, absolutely not. That's not going to happen. You know what I'm saying? Because there, I shouldn't need an accessory to, in order to communicate with my wife. Right? I think accessory is not the right word. Okay. Chaperone? Chaperone, sure. You know, mm-hmm. so I get it, but that's that's just a hard season. So I guess because I don't, I think a lot of men are in this situation to where it. I think um, one, I think it's people. I think a lot of people are in this situation to where they may be in a relationship with someone that's kind of like, hey, like. If you reject my behavior, that means you're rejecting me. You know what I'm saying? But that's not true. Yeah, I'm trying to think of when you address something, are you do you separate the behavior from the person well? Like how do you communicate to me in a way that helps me understand he's talking about the behavior versus me as a human being? Because I do believe that, and I don't know if it's, the nature of some women, I'm not going to say all women, but some women or just some humans to where we, we just can't do that. You just can't do what? Separate the behavior from me as an individual, especially if it's something that where we've been this way our entire lives. Because when I think about recent conversations that I've had with certain individuals and they're like, I don't know what to tell you. I've been like this for (laughs) X, Y, Z years. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. I'm, I'm looking at them like, <laughs> that's not an excuse. Yeah. You know? And I think there's a difference with our generation because I do think we understand that some things can be unlearned. Yeah. When you, especially when you ad- address the root of where that behavior comes from, you know, and you make intentional decisions to heal. I saw a post recently. Um, oh, hold on. You can talk while I look for it. Uh, I don't know if I bookmarked it. 
Yeah, I don't know. Lily, come back in here. Here. So lay down. Um, I, I'm trying to think because you, you're saying, how do I communicate to you that makes you believe I'm just talking about you as a whole person? Yeah, because I'm... No, 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 no. That... What? No, I said that differentiates the behavior from the human. Yeah, sh so you're saying I could communicate that better? Or you're trying to think about ways I have done it to compare it to if I can do it better or not? Yeah. Um... Maybe I'm sure I could do better at that. I'm I'm positive I can do better at that. Um it you know, I feel like you know, in order for me to like express this, there has to be a certain amount of like examples I have so you can see it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Cuz like otherwise, I'm just talking about something that's not real if I don't have examples. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so I feel like that's also, oh, that's, that's very cute, Naya. Is that a butterfly? Or is that a heart? Yeah. Beautiful. I feel like there's a level of um, evidence that you have to have over a series of, you know, seasons to be like, okay, this may be a pattern of behavior that I might want to adjust. You know, mm -hmm. otherwise it's just one time, mm -hmm. you know. I can't find it. Um, yeah. But I think that's the long suffering where it's like, OK, well. One thing that I, I do attribute, you know, is that you when you get it, you got it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yo, when you get it, you got it, you know, and I think that. For, but but for me, when we're in the season, sometimes I'm like, yo, I don't know if she's ever going to get this one. You know what I mean? Because it's such, for me, it's like such an obvious, like, oh, this is not good. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Um, and one thing I was, oh, sorry, were you finished no, with your thought? I'm done. Are you sure? Mm -hmm. And one thing I will say for me is that when Glenn does express himself, it does start to feel like the end of the world, the end of our Marriage. <laughs> it feels like the end of our marriage. Excuse me. Yeah. Like, uh, there's times, like recently, um, when I shared a recent revelation that I got, you remember that night in our bedroom? I was like, I don't even know why he's still here. Yeah. Because it's just, I don't know why he's still here if it's this bad. You were talking about cutting losses and going our separate <laughs> ways. Like, I'm let's looking sell at the like, house. Let's split the uh, money from the sale and let's just go. Like, I'm the, done. I'm like, what in the heck it's, is wrong with and you? And I don't know. <laughs> it's because, I mean, y'all, we're 13 years married. And I'm like, at this point, why are we doing this? Why? I'm tired. I'm tired of there always being something, you know, like I'm just tired. Mm. And so for mm -hmm. me, mm -hmm. when he brings up a new thing or a recurring thing and it's like, hey, I still haven't figured that out and I've been trying. Oh, hell no. I'm done. OK, well, check this out. <laughs> do you really believe that you were trying? Or do you think you were blind? I was blind. Yeah. So. In a sense. Like. The the the, uh, the trigger, like the one thing wrong doesn't negate everything great. I know. But at the moment, it always seems so big and heavy. But I think it is big. Yeah. I think I think for the scale of what we've been dealing with for as long as we've been dealing with it. It was huge. You know what I'm saying? And there, the evidence was so compelling that I was kind of like, hey, are you able to see this? You know what I mean? And your response to me was, not only am I not able to see it, but we should just not even try. <laughs> <laughs> Which in hindsight, in hindsight is always 2020. I realize how major that is. However, when you're really in the middle of something that you cannot see, it's kind of like, I really can't see it. And you're coming across as like a, you know, <laughs> you're coming across as this, like, you're coming across as if you're crazy 
and you're the one that's got it wrong. I can't see your dad's head. Yeah, you're going to have to scoot back or something. Put it in your lap, baby. Uh, well, then you're going to have to go watch somewhere else. Okay. Where you want to watch? On the TV? Yeah. Okay. okay. She doesn't. She wants to watch here, but you can't because we don't have headphones. It's going to be loud. Sorry, babe. Love you. You can just walk this way, baby. This isn't plugged in. Go, go this way. No, I don't want you to go in there. There's too many cords. Thank you. It's <coughs> gracious. Um... Yeah, <laughs> you gonna scoot over or not? <laughs> um, yeah, so I think the 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 hard part about this situation um, is like we know we also know people, we also know people who are, you know, like some flaws you just can't see. Like there are certain things like in seasons of our marriage, I just could not see. Mm -hmm. I could not see. Mm -hmm. Like you were like, look, bruh. Look, mm -hmm. this is obvious. And I'm like, nope, I like, but it doesn't negate this, but mm -hmm. this is true, right? Mm -hmm. And so what you've been taught is that this one thing is so true, and this is the only thing you can rely on. And I'm like, actually, that's probably the most toxic thing in your life. Oof. That is the most um, harmful thing that you have access to, and you're drinking it without a filter. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so for me to tell you that the source of your happiness is toxic and contaminating your body and affecting our relationship and our children's relationship, it's like I'm not even telling you the truth. It's like you have to be lying to me. And as a matter of fact, you must be the problem. And our relationship probably is over, not because of anything I'm doing, because I've always been like this, but because you are calling it out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. And so when we sit into this, like. And I don't have any, like, addictions, like, in that one. I don't know. No. I don't know if people are reading into it. And I think if you're behind the, in the community, I would be open to sharing. Yeah, in the community, we, we, we should definitely share it. But I just want to say, use this and apply that to something in your life that may be harmful, but you think is necessity for life. So I'm just saying it doesn't have to be. You don't have to know exactly what it is to relate to what Yvette's saying. Mm -hmm. You could. You may just have something in your life that's, hey, this is gospel for me. Mm -hmm. My husband doesn't think it's right. Mm -hmm. Or my wife doesn't think this is a problem, but I think this is perfect and this is the way it should be. Mm -hmm. if, they, if, you, if your spouse sees it as a red flag, right, mm -hmm. then you got to look at it, yeah. you know, and go ahead. And I feel like you have to, like, help people help you look at it. You can't just look at it because I have been looking at it for 13 years and I've heard him and I've seen some of what he was talking about, but it wasn't until I processed what I was looking at with other people, therapists, friends, mentors, that I was able to see what needed to be seen. And for a long time, I didn't share with anybody because I feel like but, you know, like there were people that I shared with it, but I think the versions are, or I shared, actually there's, I don't know, let's say, geez, it's You're so much. What's wrong, babe? Well, I feel like I need to say stuff, but it's like I can't say it because I don't want to put everything on blast. But there were people that I was sharing it with who also couldn't see. So I think it's one thing to mm. share with people in such a way to help you be able to see but you have to be wise about who you share it with because I was sharing it. I was sharing Glenn's concerns and the things he was saying with individuals, but they were individuals who were experiencing, <laughs> experiencing the same toxicity that I was experiencing. And so therefore they were not able to see it as well as Glenn was able to see it. And so when I was able to filter it through like a therapist and people who are just wiser and, you know, had actually like the person that actually helped me see what I needed to see, had walked through the necessary steps to create a more healthy situation in said situation. Yeah. And I'm sorry that we're being cryptic like this. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it is really important because I feel like what's crazy about people who are like fitness, mm -hmm. like this is an analogy. So someone who's like a, an, a fitness person, right, mm -hmm. who's like, oh, man, and, you know, they're like, 
ten percent body fat or like eight percent body fat. Is that fat. possible? Yeah, absolutely. And they're nice. like super ripped, right? To someone who is, um, almost uh, addicted to food and has issues like this, they're kind of like, yeah, he's a health nut. Like you're almost crazy about fitness. You're you're obsessed with your body. Like it's almost like the language became there's something wrong with Glenn. He just doesn't get it. He's got issues. He's got to work on himself. And I'm kind of like, actually, all this is bad. I'm willing to I'm willing to be here, mm-hmm. but we got to work on this. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so, you know. The, the the systems that were in place were so bad and it, it just was hard, you know. It was so hard in our relationship and I'm glad that we were able to communicate to get on the other side. But I definitely was like, well, we might not make it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, and you were cool with that. You were like, hey, like, but I'm kind of like, man, I can't even call you out. That's not fair. You know what I'm saying? Because if this was about the dishwasher, it would be a whole other situation. You know what I'm saying? But this thing is kind of like, hey, that is not going to affect our marriage. That's going to affect our cleanliness of the dishes. But this is going to affect everything. This is going to affect generational legacy, everything. Mm-hmm. And so we have to see this. <sighs> One thing that I was going to say, too, that helped me the person that ended up helping me see things more clearly was seeing the fruit of their decision was seeing how Mm -hmm. like the freedom that they get to experience now as a result of letting go of the other thing. Yeah. And so, and honestly I would have had no, I didn't really have any idea of the situation, but the Lord literally um, like merged our paths together in such a way that the timeliness of it was impeccable because I do believe like, I don't know, Glenn may be gone or I may have given up because it's just kind of like, yo, it's been too long. And I'm the type of person, (laughs) 13 years is a long time and I'm not going to sit in misery and like, I'm not going to let you sit in misery. Like if it's really that bad for you. Yeah. So I think, but at that point I was willing to like, let it go. Like, I just was like, all right, well, you know, because I, I was like, hey, I can't deal with this anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, that was the stance. It's kind of like, hey, if it's over, it's over. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But, like, I I can't stand for it, you mm-hmm. know. And I think when I get to those places where I'm just kind of, like, done, not in, like, a way to, like, manipulate you to say, hey, like, this is where I'm. It's just kind of like, man, like, no, nah, I deserve better. You deserve better. Mm-hmm. You know, what's the point of, of, of keeping? Why is this so sacred? Mm-hmm. You know, um, and then I got to the a point where I just had to remind myself of the truth where I was crying about something you weren't phased by. I remember like crying and you were just like, yeah, <laughs> like, and I was just like, man, she really does not get it or care. It's not that I don't care. I just, don't you didn't care as much public. as I, huh? I just don't cry in public. Mm, that's not true. You cry when things are emotional. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But my own stuff, I don't cry. I Mm. mean, I've been crying lately, but I don't cry. Yeah. (laughs) I don't know. But my emotion toward it didn't affect you. You know what I'm saying? It did. It does get to me when you cry. Yeah. But it just was like, why am I crying and she's not? Like, why do I care more than she? And I'm like, I'm over this. I just was like, nah, we good. She'll be fine. I'll be fine. And I was starting to think like, okay, who has custody of the children? Like those are the conversations mm-hmm. I was starting I, to I have. I do too because I was like, he can, he going to fight for me. Oh, I'm, I mean, I'm going to fight for these kids. So I was like, ah, oh, shoot. I don't know if it's worth it. Let's and just... I was like, she's not going to win. Oh, my gosh. Why do you think I'm not going to win? You're just not going to win. Why? Because of the situation. Mm. I'm Oh, it's impossible. I was like, no. And it's not because I don't want you to have access. i just very protective. And I was just like, oh, she's not going to win this. You heard it here, ladies and gentlemen. No. I mean, like, now I trust you more, but it was affecting my trust with Mm, you. I can see that. You know what I'm saying? Like, Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, she's not all there, Mm -hmm. you know? But that's crazy how 
you know, I don't even know what to call it, but like those type of situations where you have an idol is idolatry. I feel you say it's idolatry, idol worship. Um, sure. <laughs> What's not allowing you to say it was idol worship? I don't know. I don't know if it was. I guess I need to look up the definition. Worship of idols. Extreme admiration, love, or reverence for something or someone. Mm. I don't know. Okay. I understand why. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't think of... The worship of someone or something other than God as though it were God. I don't think that's how I thought of it. What's up, Anaya? Come come over here. Yeah, you can eat lunch. Anaya, you have to come over here. Um, okay, so it wasn't out of worship. Um It wasn't out of worship. I don't uh, I'll let you call it in. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. What's up, Nizai? Can I eat lunch? Yeah. You can eat your lunch, girl, anytime. Um, oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, dang it. I would say when you're dealing with something, I don't know. Because it, it, for me, it felt like either idol worship I just know in priority of what was important, it didn't seem like I was as important. I knew I wasn't, I knew nothing was going to go past God for you, mm -hmm. right? But it seemed like after God, it was this. Really? Yeah. Then it was our children, then it was you, then it was me. Mm. I can see that. And I'm not saying that the 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 um system was an idol mm -hmm. i'm saying that the the placement of the uh reverence village mm -hmm. like the, the concept was the idol mm. you know what i'm saying because if all else fails because <laughs> if that? all else fails mm -hmm. this would always be there Mm. This would hold you. This would keep you. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so that's why, like, when you guys, when we talk about therapy, like, therapy works when you work it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I would say that this was probably, like, a really heavy set for Yvette. Like, a, a, it, was, it, was, it was labor. Like, it was hard work. Mm -hmm. And even for the past, you know, however many years, this all culminated to this one decision, I feel. Yeah. Like her her deep work intensive, all the therapy we did together, all the therapy she's done our, on our own. Um, and it's crazy how different the therapist can be because I think one of your therapists would have been like, yeah, girl, leave him. <laughs> yes. He's obviously a problem. He don't want you to be happy. <laughs> I, well, I don't know if therapists actually ever do that, but yeah. She was close to it. She this was morning. she was close to it for sure. It was from what from what you told me. Yeah. So yeah. That's I, why I had to leave her because I was like, I don't think she liked men. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um I and, and I think when we started to talk about, you know. Has your husband ever seen you whole? Mm -hmm. Have you ever been whole? Or is are is your family getting you in pieces? Mm -hmm. And that's when we started to, right? Yeah. That's when we started to be like, okay. Yeah. What does it look like for you to be whole? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and then we start, we put we placed a value not on any system or anything like that, but just your health. And like, yeah. are you okay? And when will you be okay? Mm -hmm. um, because it just seemed like something we were just kind of putting off and eventually we figured this out. But yeah. I'm grateful. I'm grateful 
for the women that you have in your life Mm -hmm. now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, I I agree. No, because I mean, like every all the women in your life are great, but some women can only take you so far. Take you so far, but they they uh, they have to walk through the season. They gotta go Mm -hmm. through it, and so. I want to, I, I want this to be a safe place for men too. Yes, but for I, sure. But I understand why. Because do you think that men um, found us through their significant other? Yeah. I yeah. think, but when I'm getting DMs and when I'm talking to other men, they're like, yo, this is really healthy. You know, I think because they watch how we communicate and I'm, I'm I'll, sometimes I'm vocal about what I'm not happy about sometimes. You need a spoon. Baby. There's spoons in the drawer by the sink, in this in this kitchen area. Sometimes she be acting so helpless, and then other times she be taking initiative like none other. See, I was gonna say she's so adorable. <laughs> she is so adorable. Oh my gosh, that's your daughter. What's going on with my iPad? Okay. Um. No, I. I. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm really grateful. I'm grateful because you do have a lot of patience. There was the other day that this might be another chocolate baby story time, but we were having a very premature conversation about who's going to teach the kids how to ride, drive. <laughs> and Raya was saying that he would prefer his father to teach him how to drive. And then Glenn so graciously was like, "Now, nah, what did you say? How did you say it? Do you remember how you said it?" Um, no. He said something to the tune of, now, your mom may have had <laughs> more accidents. Ex- accidents. <laughs> because they were like, remember when mom got in this accident and she hit another hey, car? Hey, 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 hey. No, no, no. And the car was parked. They were like, they were like remember when mom hit that car? Okay, and I'm listen. looking. I'm like, what? She hit a car? Like, with the kids I know. I was thinking, I don't know if Glenn knows about this. <laughs> Let's all keep this hush hush. No, but I think you do know about it because I think you were home when it happened. I like just sideswiped. Yeah, a car, and they were like, "She hit, she crashed Dad's car, and then she crashed Mom, Mom's car." I didn't crash. See, you guys, now yeah. see, I wasn't gonna get into all of that. Uh-huh. I was just saying, Glenn so graciously said something to the tune of, "Even though Mom has had many incidents, she's still a good driver." <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, we would both be good teachers. Like we would both, you'd be able to learn from us both or something like that. Yeah. And in that moment, there was just something about him that was like, wow. And it, there's many moments like this with Glenn, like genuinely, I like, this is, this might be very simple and whatever. Yeah, it's very simple. But I feel like Glenn's grace and his patience And I do feel like you do a good job of loving me like God loves me. Like, I really do believe that I get to experience the love of God through you. Mm. And so I realize that you're not normal. (laughs) That, like, you could have been gone a long time ago, like, with legitimate enough reasons. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But you have an amount of grace and patience and endurance and perseverance Mm. and work ethic like none other that like I have been extremely blessed by and I'm grateful because honestly like the same thing I mean not the same thing but very much of that is true for me too Mm -hmm. like I have really good patient like patience endurance work ethic all the things yes however there have been some real deep moments in our marriage where it's like well if he calls it quits I'm fine with that Like, we could be gone. Like, we'll figure it out. Mm -hmm. I'll be fine by myself. He'll be fine by himself. We'll share the kids, all the things. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, And so because you're not that, like, because you've never given up or been like, I'm out or whatever, we've been able to make it to this point. (laughs) You know what I mean? By the everything that we've both put into it, we've been able to make it to this point where we're still married. I feel like we are probably the healthiest we've been our entire marriage Mm -hmm. at this point. Mm -hmm. And I feel like there's just a lot more clarity of where we are and where we're headed. And we're just, you know? Um, I would say that, you know, it's definitely 
on both sides. You know what I mean? Like you work really hard at very simple things. You know what I'm saying? And executing consistently, you mm-hmm. know? Um, and I think that the goal isn't for us to still be married. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. I think, mm. you know, family tree wise, we break off, we branch off and build a life that we want together, not yeah. just centered around our, we've been together for a long time mm-hmm. or we're still at the same church or our kids are yeah, the priority or our kids are successful. Like it's not built around these false idols, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? But really trying to focus on what God wants to do through us. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And so that I'm very glad for. And um, I think these trials have, these this that lesson right specifically mm-hmm. because it was hard and even i feel like i had to fail you in order to have that as an example mm. of like you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. but truly it was a blessing mm-hmm. like for us to both be on like okay we agree mm-hmm. that this is the standard so now we know the truth Mm-hmm. Right. We're both able to see the truth. And I think those trials are a blessing. Yeah. And un- as unfortunate as they are, as hard as they are, as, you know, like faulty, like it's almost feel like the, the like it, we can crack through the ice here. Yeah. And we can both drown mm. and never be seen again. But man, you know, those lessons are important. And that's what makes us, you know, really be able to see each other for who we are. You know, what's interesting is this morning I um, went for a walk at the beach and I saw like moms with their children, you know, maybe three and under. Um, And it made me think about the days when life was hard as a mom because at one point I had four, three four and under and I remember being able to like just say hey we're gonna go spend the day at the beach you know pack them up go to the beach hang out there for the day and I remember also that that was a hard season and I was telling myself I was like man that was hard then <laughs> 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 and it still feels hard now and that saying that keeps coming into my head I know it's hard let it be hard. Yeah. And the reason that we have to do that is because on the other side of it, it's just so much growth, necessary growth mm-hmm. that happens. And so I don't know. I just feel like um, now when it's hard, I feel like it's easier for me to really experience the joy of the Lord is my strength mm-hmm. because I've already seen him bring me out of hard seasons and I've already seen the fruit of those seasons that in this season, I know there's going to be more fruit mm-hmm. that comes at the other side of this, at the end of this. And so I know it's hard and I choose to let it be hard mm-hmm. while relying on the joy of the Lord as my strength. Yeah. And in loving, expect expecting the feeling on the other side. Yes. Like I already know that eventually... This is going to be a crazy yeah. story about God's grace. Yeah. About God's mercy. Yeah. Right. So like right now, only thing I can do is like feel the pain. Yep. And soak in it. <laughs> yes. It's like, ooh, <laughs> this is stretching me. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I'm still breathing. I got a lot to be grateful for. Like I was talking to my therapist and he was like, hey, man, you haven't called me all month. It must have been great. Mm. Right. And I was like, actually, it wasn't. Mm-hmm. But. Man, like, I've got so many things to be thankful for. Mm -hmm. And I just started telling them all the great things that I had to be thankful for, Mm -hmm. even though this was a particularly tough season, Mm -hmm. you know. And that day was a hard day for you, too, I feel like, that week. Mm -hmm. It was super, super difficult. And so I was like, you know, but I had this conversation with someone in my life that I never thought was going to change. And they told me about some things that they were going through. And... You know, they started to kind of um, uh, justify some of their behaviors. Mm -hmm. And instead of getting upset, 
with how they're justifying their behaviors, I just was like, this is, is this is great. They're mm-hmm. making this, this is growth. I'm not going to choose to flip this around on them and talk about how they should be perfect. Mm-hmm. Right. Like the dude from the last mm-hmm. episode, like, no, nah, this is good. They're yeah. amazing. This is awesome. Yeah. And so I'm just grateful, you know, um, I'm proud of you, you know what I'm saying? For like, I know it's hard, you know, but I think that on this side, I think you know now that you're not going to die. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? With this being the mm-hmm. cause, like this isn't going to be the cause of your death. Mm-hmm. And neither are they. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, we'll, they'll be fine. We'll be fine. You'll be fine. Um, And then you also know that, like, hey, like the people that need to have your back, have your back. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I think, I, I don't know. I'm grateful for the growth and the pain. Yeah. Growing pains. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. How married are you? Hold on. Let me pull up my Rolodex. There was one night that I was working late at the office and I was driving Glenn's truck. And I've been experiencing this severe dryness with my eyes that I had to actually stop working at the office and leave to go home. But when I got in the truck, because I hadn't driven the truck all day, it was like one of those things where he left with the van and I kept the truck here. Got in the truck and there was like no gas. And there was definitely enough gas to get me home to the eye drops that I needed to put in my eyes. (laughs) But rather than going straight home, I stopped at the gas station so that he could wake up in the morning with a full tank of gas. That is very thoughtful and crazy. I didn't even notice. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I didn't know you did that. That's so crazy. Oh my goodness. That's funny. How married are you, love? Um I'm so married that um this is not really that big of a deal. It's like duh. We already <laughs> gonna So Yvette took a trip to Joanne's Fabrics. Oh god. And for some reason, the car went dead. Like in the next four days, it would go dead. Are you four being times. facetious that when you say for some reason? Huh? Are you being facetious when you say for some reason that the car went dead? Yeah. Yeah, we didn't know why at the time. Oh. Uh, so. I wasn't sure if you're suggesting that it was my fault that the car went dead. Oh no, I wasn't suggesting that. Okay. But you do know you have a problem, right? Okay. Keep going with Do you your... not have a problem with it? You know? I don't have a problem. Okay. Okay. So, all right. So, anyway. I, can I just finish? Finish your story. I'm listening. All right. So, Yvette hit me up and was like, hey, the car died again. And I went to AutoZone, got longer jumper cables, and came and jumped the car. And then... Because I told him... You're probably going to need long jumper cables because this young kid tried to help me and it didn't work. Yeah. And I jumped the car. That was all. That was all I did. But, babe, you got you do have to understand that there is something. Guys, listen. Let me explain myself because now y'all think I crash cars and I make batteries die. The health of our battery is not good. And I honestly think it has to do with the fact that you put a power surge in the van so that we could have plugged up GoPros and stuff. And that is what's sucking up the energy. Because I gave our daughter a breathing treatment that morning mm-hmm. on the way to music class. Mm-hmm. You know? And so maybe that's what happened. Okay, so it's my but fault. But Glenn, <laughs> I'm not saying it's Glenn's fault. But what happened was our battery died. Our battery just died. It's dead. It was a bad battery. It was not my fault. There have been times in the past. That's what I want to talk about. Where I have been sitting in the car while Anaya's in music class. Is reading, the engine running? The engine's not running. Mm-hmm. The car is just on. I'm listening to music or something. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that that is not good for your battery. Then she gets in the car. <laughs> you didn't know that wasn't good for your battery? I thought that's how the car works. You be able to listen to music while it's idle or whatever. I didn't know it was going to kill the battery. What are you doing? Don't do no sound effects. That was my case. That was the most ridiculous sound I rest my case. Okay. And that's That's just just how married married we are. What do you mean you don't know? Babe, 
You don't know that it's bad for the car? I didn't know that the battery would die. I just thought that... I thought you could sit in the car with the car on as long as it wasn't running. I for thought it was long? better for it to not run than for it to just be on. For how long? How long do you think that was going to last? How long do you think you could sit in the car without it running and the car don't battery don't die? I don't know. Right, so now she, I know. So she just Well, that. her class is, what, 50 minutes? So remember how when we were in the RV? Yes. And we turn on the propane and the, the, the car is running off just the energy in the propane tank? Uh-huh. Right? But in order to get it, the AC to turn on, you got to turn on the engine. Mm. Because we're not plugged in at a site, mm. so the engine you you can make energy off the engine, and that's gonna sustain the rest of the car battery and all that stuff because mm-hmm. the engine is helping the battery to run. Got it. Well, now I know if I'm gonna sit in the car with the AC on or whatever. But I you act like you haven't. Br- that hasn't happened like several times. Okay, but what I'm saying, no, it's only happened. <laughs> no, babe, babe, babe. How many times does it happen for real? And it only happens at music class, so I don't know. I don't gymnastics. Know. Oh, it happened at gymnastics too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have a problem. <laughs> I don't know.